acres which were in these two parcels. In order to do that, they will have to dredge a path to the Goat Islands. They will build out the, the area between the Goat Islands and they will connect it by a bridge, as I said, to this. They have said in that 6,000 acres they'd like to do a variety of industrial and, and light manufacturing activities. They expect to build a huge training facility uh, to upgrade the skills that will be necessary. And this, what is going to be on the Goat Island would look something like this. It would have a port, it would have crane, the assembly of those huge cranes for the entire hemisphere would take place there. Czech is actually a major dredging company. They would be doing some of their own operations and storing their equipment and so on for use in the hemisphere in that location. They asked for permission to examine this and the government said, okay, we'll enter into an MOU. We have gone through various phases. Uh, it is now, we have signed a framework agreement which says that we will uh, agree to continue with the development Currently, they are doing all of the technical work for the dredging operations and the building out of that land. They have to do the geotechnical studies and the, uh, the wave motion studies. A whole set of studies are being done, which the master builders will know even better than I. They are doing the studies for building the bridge across the, the islands. They are doing the studies for developing these lands. Again, you need geotechnical studies as well as the commercial analyses to figure out what companies are going to be located in there and where would be the best location for them. They have said that they would like to have their own independent energy supply for that. Uh, since Kelly is not here. Oh, she is. Uh, oh, she is. She is. Oh, well, uh, well, Kelly would know that uh, they would have <laughs> spoken to her about that. They have said that they think that they would want their own energy supply. I think that those issues are still in under discussion with them about that. Uh, but we know that those, that those types of analyses are being done. The idea is that in construction, or the expectation is that during the construction phase, there will be about 2,000 jobs generated. And check projects that it, they would have about 10,000 jobs when this thing is complete. They say that they would in, it would involve $1.5 billion dollars, dollars worth of investment. So the next question is, what is the role of the government and the PAJ in this process? This is a private investor that is going to be developing this. And our role is to work with them to get the necessary approvals for the acquisition of the lands, to provide the necessary support in respect of the approval processes that might be necessary to ensure that they understand what is required. You will know that there has been an environmental lobby around this because, the goat, because of the importance of the Goat Islands and the area in, in and around it. It is actually in an, uh, a, 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 an area that is designed for mixed industrial, commercial, and residential, as well as environmental uses. Uh, and so that it will require the approval of NEPA. We are at the stage now where they are doing the technical analyses. We expect that the final designs would be ready uh, within, within three months or so. These are expected to go to NEPA. NEPA will tell them what remediation they have to do if they are to get approvals to develop the project and work will begin on development immediately thereafter. What you may not be able to see is that the highway, the, the, the South Coast Highway, Highway 2000 passes just at the top of this, just at the top of it where the land is located. And the, the there will be a link to the North Coast, the North South Highway. The value of that is that you'll be able to move goods and persons from anywhere from Manchester, Mapen, anywhere along the, along the highway, and anywhere from St. Anne down into that general location within the space of an hour. You'll be able to move, which then brings logistics, it introduces another dimension of logistics. So then there are a set of business opportunities for site development. We spoke of the site development in respect of, of the facilities out here as well as the Czech facilities. The development of factories and, and uh, commercial buildings. A set of value added services for the global uh, supply chain. Uh, and all of these things would enhance the attractiveness of the south coast of, of Jamaica. 
But beyond those, there are a set of additional services that can be, uh, that would make the Kingston, uh, the, the, harbor on the, so the harbors on the south coast even more attractive. The, if you have large numbers of ships coming into Kingston and into, port, uh, and into the Portland by the area, these ships require spare parts. They require, those of you who are sailors know you have to paint these hulls on an ongoing basis. Uh, the, the crews that are on them require a set of goods as they travel across the globe. That's called chandlery. There's a, a big opportunity there. These ships, uh, just like your automobile, things go wrong on them. They have to be repaired. And when they're in dock, when they're in harbor, that's the best time for them to be doing some of the ship repairs. The supply of, of fuel to them is called bunkering. Uh, there are a set of marine services which include pilot boats and tugboats and so on that have to be done. There are opportunities for dry docking. If at various points, these ships have to be taken out and work done on them. That's what is referred to as dry docking. And there are opportunities for uh, bulk activities. All of these are additional activities that would be supported by a larger volume of ships coming into the Kingston, into, into this area, but would also make Kingston a more attractive location if these services are, are offered. So what we see in this case are that there are a set of investment opportunities that will arise from the logistics. They include the development of warehouses and assembly plants and offices, a set of services, maritime services, pilotage, towing, and so on but also financial services, insurance, and so on. And these, we argue, are, in fact, long-term assets that would be a good investment base for entities like our main, our title sponsor, I believe, Jamaica National, and uh, the pension funds, and, and so on. Uh, there are great opportunities there. But we also see, uh, Patrick, a range of opportunities for master builders. We think that Jamaica needs to be even more engaged in things like dredging. The days of just assuming that it has, it's only Europeans that can do that are beyond us. You've seen the opportunities for port enhancement and new, new port development and construction. There are a set of uh, opportunities for the, building out the, the facilities that would be required in Kingston and Portland by it. I've just showed you some marine service uh, opportunities that would exist. So there are a large number of uh, opportunities for investment, and uh, we claim that while we will work with international players in helping the development, there are many opportunities for private investments in Jamaica. What I said is the last third of my presentation. I want to shift gears just slightly and look at other logistic opportunities that relate to our business. And I want to focus on the opportunities on the cruise and a little bit on BPO. What we'd like to do is to move from world-class cruise facilities to economic development. The reason why I've included it in a discussion of logistics is because the Jamaica cruise business is entirely based on where we are located. We just so happen most cruises originate somewhere in, in the Gulf, either in Florida or in Texas. And they come down, uh, they go around Cuba to, the, to a variety of locations and then come back up. They'd like to do that in about seven days or five days. Because of where Jamaica is located, we, ha we are ideally located on either the seven day or five day ring around, around this, this area. And it doesn't really matter whether you leave from Fort Lauderdale, Miami, or uh, any of the other ports here, and even the ports in Houston. We are an ID location for that, that reason. Next slide, please. And it's for that reason that we have four world-class ports, uh, well, let me say three plus one, uh, on the north coast. We have Falmouth, which is the best, which is recognized as the best port in, in, in the region. We have Montego Bay. We have... Uh, Ocho Rios, and we have the other one, which is Port Antonio, which is really not a, a, a cruise ship port, but really more for, for smaller vessels, for smaller pleasure vessels and so on. The other thing that Jamaica has, those other little dots that you saw on, the, on that ring, none of them can boast almost 100 uh, attractions. We have the largest natural attraction, which is Dunsrua Falls. 
We have, you know many of them, dolphin coves, several dolphin coves. We have uh, zip lines. We have a r water parks. We have river rafting. We have a whole host of attractions, which is what cruise ship passengers want to go to a location where there are many things that they can do. And Jamaica has more than any other. We think that if you have world-class ports and world-class attractions, it gives the opportunity for growth in, in the sector. And the, the proof is in the pudding. We have won many awards for the cruise ship piers, the ports that we operate. Uh, <clears throat> Falmouth has won the Historic Cruise Development Prize three times. Uh, we have Ocho Rios has nine times received the Caribbean leading cruise destination and so on. But we can't sit on our laurels because those other dots that, are in, that, that we showed you on, the, on the, the chain, they're all busy trying to emulate Jamaica. The request that I get most uh, in my office is from ministers from all of these islands that want to go and visit Falmouth. They all want to look at Falmouth because the cruise lines tell them this is the best and they are going to effectively build things that are better than that. Now, Falmouth is the newest, but I would claim that the jewel in this thing is really Ocho Rios. Ocho Rios, why? Most of those nine, many of those 90 attractions are within minutes of Ocho Rios. Uh, but Ocho Rios has become dated, a little bit stale, and Ocho Rios suffers from a, a problem that is, it is not uniquely Jamaican, but we like to be the best in everything. The harassment in Jamaica has become a major pain for the, the cruise visitors. Uh, and so we have to address those issues. And so we have embarked on a redevelopment of, of the Ocho Rios facility, uh, which involves, this is a terminal, this is a, you can just about see where the, the, the cruise ships uh, berth. This is a terminal, and there's a roadway that leads it to the, to the main, main road in, in, uh, in, in Ocho Rios. And we have to redevelop the, the facility because people expect that when they come off the port, they're going, off the boat, they're going to enter into, into modern facilities and they're going to have efficient ways of moving them to the various attractions. And many of them want to travel to walk around the town. But Ocho Rios is not a welcoming place. And so another phase of the development will involve redeveloping all of the main road up to the craft market, it, taking it back to the port, to the sea, and then having a broad walk all the way back around. So that you'll have uh, an interesting uh, way to look at it. But, uh, but it opens up all of these areas in between for developmental opportunities. Where are we with that? We have finished developing the terminal. The roadway from the terminal to the main road, which we call Turtle River Road, has been developed. The parking facilities have been developed. This now exists. This is the Turtle River Road. And we are now beginning the second phase, which is to move from uh, just around where Island Village is, all the way back around. Uh, Paul, I think there, there's some talk about maybe doing the broad walk instead of, of that uh, first. Those are sort of sister phases and they will be done simultaneously. But we don't end there. A, a Ocho Rios in its current state can only take one large vessel, one of these mega uh, cruise ships. Uh, when we have two coming in there, it has to go over to Reynolds Pier. Reynolds Pier, those of you who know it, is really not, a, not somewhere where you, you carry a cruise ship passenger. That's, that's really an industrial, it's really for bauxite and, and limestone. So we have to redevelop that, that facility. Uh, and we, have, we are now doing the engineering for that. What we hope to eventually develop is to, have, is to effectively divide it in two pieces and to have one focus on industrial, one half of it focus on industrial, and the other half will be redeveloped for, for tourists. So we'll have a tourist uh, dock, we'll have new parking arrangements here, and we will connect this back to the, for the other pier with a, a broad walk. And along that path, you're going to have a, a number of attractions in the, with the green dots. The idea is to, is to take Ocho Rios and make it even more competitive than Falmouth through this redevelopment process so we can take two huge ships on an ongoing basis to have the facilities and to integrate the investment opportunities that would then allow for the passengers that come off there who don't even want to go to the attraction. There'll be a whole lot to do just in and around Ocho Rios and hopefully we'll be able to manage the harassment problem so that Ocho Rios regains its place as the number one uh, cruise ship in pier. 
This is our Montego Bay facility. Over here is where we have our cruise shipping, and over here we have uh, uh, and, uh, our cargo facilities. There's a lot of land available for development here, uh, and we have a number of plans for that. But Montego Bay, one of the problems we have with Montego Bay is that when the cruise ship passengers come off in Montego Bay, they still want to go to Ocho Rios because that's where the attractions are. It takes an hour and a half to get to, to Ocho Rios and an hour and a half to come back. So if you're in port for five or six hours and three are taken up on the road, it's not the best thing. So we are looking at development of, for Montego Bay of its own set of attractions, including the railway between Ocho Rios and Appleton, which goes through Catadupa and a variety of other locations there. And we are in discussions in relationship to that development. I'll touch briefly on Falmouth, because from a master builders association, it, 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 it might be interesting to you. The, the, the areas that are paler in white, that used to be Falmouth. That is what Falmouth, you remember when you used to drive along the old road and you had to go through Falmouth, that used to come out somewhere, somewhere around here and, and, and go back out. What the Port Authority did a few years ago was to develop this port, all of this yellow area was land reclaimed from dredging to create the path to Falmouth and then bolted on that, this, this new piece of land. And this is the Falmouth Pier. You can have cruise ships on either side uh, and there are set up buildings here. When you look at it, it's, a very, it's an outstanding both engineering feat and as a cruise ship pier, it is one of the most inviting cruise ship piers that we have. And it has, as you have said, won a lot of awards. Our big problem, and you mentioned Paul, one of the things that Paul worries about is that cruise ship passengers come in, want to stay just in this yellow area, or they get on the, the, the uh, buses and go to other locations. So the people in Falmouth feel that, well, we had, this, we had Falmouth, you come and you slap on this piece of land beside us, these people come, we don't get any benefit from it, that's not good for, for development. It is not associated with the better Jamaica that your title spoke of, Patrick. And so what our objective to, is to do is to create mechanisms which will take them into the town. When they go into the town at the moment, it's a very uninviting place. The, there are open drains, smells bad. The, uh, the, the shops are not oriented to tourists. The shops are oriented to, to locals. So, so they come off and they go in there. They want to go into the town, and as soon as they go in and they see what is in there and they get a bit of harassment, they pull back. And we need to change that, and that's what we are working on, on doing. So what we're doing is uh, working along some of the major highways to change the, the streetscaping and to uh, improve the quality of the roads, the, the sidewalks, and the buildings that would be in there to make them more tourist-oriented. We are also developing what is known as the Hamden Wharf area. Uh, which is a very historic area. Uh, we could spend a, a long time on Falmouth, but, but this is where the slaves used to be traded. Uh, Falmouth was one of the big slave trading locations, and a lot of it occurred just in this area. And we want to develop that area by developing a museum, by developing a performing uh, arts area. We hope to have some shops where the best craftsmen in Jamaica would be both doing and, and displaying their works, uh, as well as an, a number of other entertainment opportunities. We are doing this in a public-private uh, uh, approach. And then finally, I want to just speak a little. So I've told you a little bit about what we're doing in the cruise ship inside, and I just want to spend a moment on the business process outsourcing. Jamaica has actually emerged as one of the important business process outsourcing locations in, in the region. And our, the, the reason is, again, because of where we are located. This is Jamaica, and if you look at this network of, of fiber optic tape cables that links the region, Jamaica is at the center of it. And because we're at the center, we have great, a greater degree of redundancy than most other locations. So as far as information processing centers go, Jamaica is, is ideally located. But because we are also located close to North America, which is where a lot of the, uh, the work comes from, and because we have a large uh, English-speaking population uh, because we have the affinity. Jamaicans actually can speak a brand of English. Believe it or not, in spite of what you read in the newspaper about our English, we speak a brand of English 
that, that the North Americans find far more acceptable and, and, and are, are easily adaptable than from Philippines or from India. And you would know that our Jamaicans speak American very quickly. You don't even have to uh, migrate to be able to, to speak that very well. Well, it turns out that most of the business process outsourcing uh, operations in Jamaica actually take place in factories that were once developed as warehouses, either in Kingston or in Montego Bay. They were developed as warehouses for goods when we used to bring in brick bulk and so on. There was no more need for that, so we converted them uh, into garment factories. You remember when there was 807? They were converted for use as 807 factories. And when the CBI changed and all of that migrated to Mexico, they were then converted into, over time, into BPO factories. They were gutted and replenished in factories. And we have, in Jamaica, many of the largest players in the business process outsourcing, which is a, is a trillion dollar, multi-trillion dollar in, uh, uh, business. Uh, we have some of the largest players here. And the reality is that the, about 70% of all the BPO activities take place in uh, facilities that are managed by the Port Authority, either owned by us or by Factories Corporation, which is for, for which we manage. Uh, about 60% about of that 70 is in Montego Bay. The rest is here in Kingston. Now, in that business process outsourcing business, there are many different uh, activities that get outsourced. There are the call center kinds of things. We call you to make a sale to you, or you call us uh, to tell us of a complaint. Uh, but, the, but increasingly, we are getting higher and higher value added in these business process uh, outsourcing activities. Today, some accounting activities get done outsourced. So you can do that accounting here in Jamaica, although the, the company is in the United States. Some of the legal activities get done, can, can get done uh, in an outsourced way. What we want to do is to move from the lower levels, which is the call center operations, into higher and higher value-added products. So here is the port of Montego Bay. We have the factories, corporations, buildings. We have all of these factories, which are ours. And we have a, a whole block of land, which we will continue to develop in Montego Bay and expand the resources there in association with Barnett Estates. We also have the Portmore Logistics Center, which is right here. Uh, we have a, uh, a 50,000 square foot building and the capacity to uh, add three more 50,000 square feet buildings. And we have the Kingston uh, Container Terminal. Uh, the, the Kingston Free Zone, which has uh, some facilities which are in there. And what, so what we have to do, uh, Patrick, is to build out those facilities because there's a huge market opportunity here. The major shortcoming of which is there isn't enough space available uh, to, to, to get this done. Uh, so there's a, a huge opportunity to build those facilities. You can go to the next slide. So our view, uh, what I've taken you through, is the opportunities that exist that are associated with the movement of cargo and logistics. I started with the Kingston Container Terminal, and then we went to visit Goat Island, and we saw what the opportunities were there. And we spoke about the supplemental things that would support the development of logistics in, in Jamaica, the bunkering and the uh, chandlering and so on. And then I told you that we had opportunities beyond that. And we looked at crews and we see the huge opportunity that exists in Montego Bay, Ocho Rios, and in Falmouth. We have about 1.2 million cruise ship visitors today. There's no reason that that could not be substantially increased. But what stands between us are two things. The infrastructure, which we are working on, and the private investments, which are necessary. And then we took you to BPO, which again is a location, uh, there are some opportunities related to our location, which I've highlighted, and we see that there is a huge opportunity. There's our sense that if we are able to manage the public, to get the public infrastructure invested, if we can get the private investments in those areas that we've spoken about, then there will be opportunities for development and growth in Jamaica 
uh, and we will have the Jamaica that the Master Builders Association would wish to have. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shirley. Absolutely magnificent. I think I have, and I'm sure you all have, a better understanding of what we are about to embark on. He has given us all of the information as to what the strategy is and what the developments are likely to be. It is going to be up to us as master builders and as students in the construction and engineering industry to decide what role we want to play in all of this exciting activity that is to come to us. There are certain things that he said that I, I, I particularly like. And the fact is that it's not going to be con con concentrated on the south coast. And with the advent of larger cruise ships coming into Ocherius and Falmouth, and the advent of Ocherius being no more than about 45 minutes from Kingston, you see that there are underdeveloped assets in Kingston and in Spanish Town which are tourist related, which we can then develop and have tourists there in 45 minutes. So the intermodality of all of this, we have to look at that it's not about just Kingston and Goat Island. It apparently could spread throughout the length and breadth of Jamaica. And we're really, really happy that you were able to come and so fluently and easily deliver to us a message that puts us all in the right frame of mind with the understanding of what is to happen and we hope that we can all put our foot forward and take advantage and I thank you very much again sir. Most of you who were here last year will remember that our title sponsor Jamaica National and the executive in charge of mortgage sales and apparently everything at Jamaica National <laughs> <laughs> Miss Tiffany Gordon spoke to us and she's back this year again and I'm reminded of this disc jockey on one of the radio stations that um, you see what he says so nice you played twice well she sponsored us, sponsored us last year and she's done it again this year and I want you to give her give her a round of applause just for that <laughs> um, her mark her background is in marketing and she received a Bachelor of Science in Management from Morris Brown College in the USA and has an MBA in Marketing from Clark Atlanta University in the United States. Let us welcome Ms. Tiffany Gordon. Mr. Patrick Gordon, Executive Council Member, Dr. the Honorable Omar Davies, Minister of Transport, Works and Housing, who is not here at the moment, Reginald Nugent, Senior Advisor of the Minister, Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, who is also not here at the moment. Mr. Carvel Stewart, President of the Master Builders Association. Professor Gordon Shirley. All other distinguished presenters. Members of the Master Builders of Association. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for this opportunity of being here. But before I start my presentation, I always like to give credit to my prior presenters. And the first credit will go to my most special presenter that has had a very positive impact on me today, Professor Gordon Shirley. Mr. Shirley, your presentation was excellent. And it was most enlightening. It was a most enlightening review of what is currently happening now in Jamaica and the Caribbean, as well as what to expect and also opportunities that will occur with the Logistics Hub. I thank you so, so much for that. You said it best. You said something that really struck a chord in me. You said that we lead to growth and development when we create private investments 
and also create jobs for technical professionals and members of the Master Builders Association of Jamaica. And I really do value that. You also told us that Jamaica being an, is an ideal location for this hub, which is encouraging. And also that we must move quickly to achieve this goal. You mentioned it, competition. I also admire your confidence in an, your comment where investment opportunities will arise through this initiative of the logistic hub being opened here. So thank you so much for that. But I also wondered if um, it was possible that you could arrange a container of dresses for me <laughs> with my name on it, but not at Walmart, maybe Prize Mart. <laughs> I didn't forget that one. <laughs> the last comment I wanted to make was from you, Mr. Chair. Or was it from you, Mr. Shirley, who talked about these Jamaicans that go to America and they have this, this little American accent very quickly. <laughs> I laughed to myself, but I thought maybe I'd share it with you all. He did mention that I did my master's and my bachelor's degree overseas, which is true. But I want to tell you that I think that I'm guilty of one of those individuals because <laughs> when I went to the United States first, I had this thick, strong Jamaican accent. And when I went over there, I was doing mortgages for a broker. And the customers kept saying, can you please slow down, slow down, please? I'm like, what am I supposed to do? This is just the way I'm born. This is the way I speak. But Americans could not understand because we, they say we speak too fast. So I said, you know what? After a little while, I said, you know what? I'm going to just go, go, go American right now. <laughs> so I went in big time into this American dialect, you know, and I was just like a little foreigner. I mean, they call me Jamaican. I was just really transformed. <laughs> But the joke of it is that when I decided to come back to Jamaica seven years ago after the recession, then I went to Jamaica National. And that was another drama again. Went to Jamaica National with this big American accent, this Jamaican girl with this big American accent. And all of a sudden, everybody's looking at me and saying, is who she? <laughs> so I had to do another conversion over. As I said, I just wanted to make just a couple points before I start my presentation on just a couple ish um, points that the presenters made earlier that were significant to me and just a, maybe a little refresher for you. Dr. Omar Davis, for example, he made a uh, comment about the expansion of the Panama Canal and I liked his interpretation and what he had to say about that and how that was going to benefit us. He also talked about the manufacture and assembling products here in Jamaica manufacturing and assembling of products here in Jamaica for the first time, um, and I think that is important. He talked about the increase in employment, which to me is extremely important, and not just because I'm a financial bank and we want you to buy houses, but I mean, employment is such an important thing, and when we can reduce our unemployment rate, we're always in a better position. He also mentioned up opening up the range of services in Jamaica. I appreciated that. Mr. Nugent commented that local construction sector must new, now renew their itself at this time at the level of the logistic hub initiative require of, of what they require, which is very, very important. And also he saw Jamaica as a value added center. I like that. The president, he talked about the preference needing to give to locals for contracts. I found that so funny. But anyway, I think that is a great, great initiative, and I hope that down the, down the, the, the near in the near future, we will see these contracts going to our local folks. Um, that was important. Um, he also said that he saw Jamaica serving as a major transshipment port, air, sea, land, road, and rail. That was wonderful. So on to my presentation. But right before my presentation, I, I just wanted to just warn you that my presentation is not all about Jamaica National and telling you how to, to find money to finance your project. Sorry, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> it's not only about that. Um, also, the, after Mr. Shirley's presentation, boy, he covered so much that I really can't have much more to add to the, the logistic hub situation. <laughs> but I will promise to give my two cents. As a construction center, 
under the auspices of the Incorporated Mass Abilities of Association and other organizations in our country, positions themselves to address the ramifications of preparing for the logistics hub, it is clear that the Master Builders of Association of Jamaica seminar becomes timely and relevant right now to all stakeholders of this historic developmental plan. On behalf of my organization, Jamaica National Building Society, I welcome the opportunity to participate in this discourse and I thank you so much again for the invitation. Master Builders Association of Jamaica is an organization that we hold very dear for very obvious reasons. Without these guys and these engineers and all these carpenters and all of the people that are associations of, associated with the organization and members of the organization, we really wouldn't have houses to build anyway, would we? No. And we certainly wouldn't have any to finance as Jamaica National now, would we? No. So as a result, we kind of see master builders as a synergy and a family for Jamaica National. What I find to be very positive is the fact that most Jamaicans have moved on from wondering about the logistic hub, what it's all about, what it means, how will it impact the country, to the point where their perspective has completely changed to, and this is also for students, to how can I play a role actually in helping to achieve this goal of the logistic hub. And clearly the presenters prior to have all contributed to further refining the aims and objectives of the highlighted anticipated One Jamaica initiative with the Logistic Hub. However, as we move from concept to implementation of this major national enterprise, we should also give some attention to the matter of sustainability. Therefore, as the government and people of Jamaica consolidate the elements that will make this initiative a reality with the logistic hub, a key factor will be the need to open the doors of opportunity for sustainable development. And while some of us tend to speak casually about sustainable development, I am positive that our environmentalists will not let us off the hook when it comes to implementing major projects such as this, the logistic hub. I particularly like the simple definition of sustainable development that I arrived and arti was articulated by the World Commission on Environment and Development, which states that sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Very profound definition. Therefore, if the major stakeholders in the construction phase of the development of the logistic hub are to open the doors of opportunity for sustainable development, it simply means a few things. Number one, both government and the private sector must make a firm tactic agreement to pursue economic and social development without compromising the environment. Secondly, there must be timeless, timeliness sorry, in the approvals from government agencies, parish councils and other relevant organizations to move projects forward with dispatch. And I, I, I make a quick note about the building code. I know that they have been, you have been all concerned about the building code and the revision of it that is happening now in Parliament. Um, that is one such initiative that I know that Master Bill is, is, is hoping to be one that is very timely. Thirdly, due consideration must be given to matters such as the impact of climate change, given that we are an island state. Matters such as use of land for development should be reassessed, and developers should strive to improve the quality of life of Jamaicans by providing opportunities for qualified young people to participate in the development process, given the projected creation of some 10,000 jobs. Developments will result in major population shifts, hence the need to ensure that infrastructure will support adequate residential and commercial needs. And we have spoken about the infrastructure so many times with the different road networks that have been built up and the transportation of 
of bringing customers from one um, part of town to the next, the ease of that and how that has uh, affected them positively. At the same time, the channels of communication to attract local and international investors must be open and information made available to encourage the kind of participation which will make a hub a reality. In its 140 years of serving its members, both locally and overseas, Jamaica National has partnered with organizations such as Master Builders to foster rural and urban regeneration in the development of residential and commercial properties. And we continue to do so with the confidence that the country's real estate development should be seen as a barometer of the national economy. And it is therefore our hope that as a massive scope for construction and development of the logistic hub is pursued by the Master Builders Association of Jamaica, and that also the stakeholders' role, the focus will not only be on sustainable development, but also on the enhancement of the national economy. Some time ago, I had uh, a, re a press release and I spoke about a few things about the roadways and also the benefit that um, the infrastructure has on my organization um, as well as for our customers. We are aware at Jamaica National that houses is central in development. Housing is central in development. And as our network of highways make it possible for citizens to commute, which I mentioned before, and the growth of housing developments change people's lifestyles in terms of where they live and work and how they travel. As a major player in the building society sector, we at Jamaica National have realigned itself during the past four decades to increase our locations to create opportunities for Jamaicans to purchase homes and thereby participate in the drive for the same national development. From the highs of the 1960s, we have seen how the uncertainties in global economies affected the Jamaican economy. And we speak about IMF, the International Monetary um, Fund, and the devaluation of the dollar, and all of those things that occurred uh, back then. Now I'm really happy to, to know that we can see some positive things happening out of those negative impacts that we experienced before, what we've seen is that real estate is still a viable option for investment based on where the economy is now. It's a safe and a viable investment tool as opposed to money market industries, um, investments, um, etc. Another, another aspect that I think is a very positive role, which is what we're now talking about today, is the initiation of the logistic hub opening, which we welcome at Jamaica National. We know that land and buildings are still the most viable and safest financial investment today, superseding the investments. Government papers we know and money market instruments, as I mentioned before, are not the safest investment today. And Jamaica National believes that every Jamaican should own a home and every Jamaican wants to own a home and there is a lot of value in owning a home. Many years ago, the Sunday Gleaner reported, and I quote, the real virtue of the building society lies in the creation of opportunities for thrift, for investment and for the acquisition of property. If one looks for a basic principle behind these institutions, it surely must be that the man who owns his own home makes a better citizen than the person who has no stake in the community. So with that being said, I thank you so much again for the third time, eh? I think that's three <laughs> or four maybe, I don't know. <laughs> who knows who's counting? <laughs> thank you so much for inviting us to this presentation and also just even just for enlightening me um, as an individual and also as a leader in my organization as to what to expect from the logistic hub and how that will have a positive impact on our economy or society or individuals or banks and our customers. 
So I thank you. Wow, thank you very much, Tiffany. Um